talking about the fluvial depositional landforms. In the fluvial depositional landforms, we would be understanding the various depositional features that are formed by the running rivers. In the previous class, we have already talked about the erosional landforms. Now, these depositional landforms usually take place in the lower course of the river. So, when the river is, is in the lower course, rather than the, trans, uh, the transportation and the erosional activities, what predominates here is the phenomena of deposition. So, all the sediments that are being eroded and transported in the upper course and the middle course tend to settle down or accumulate in the lower course and therefore there are various depositional landforms that are formed. These are few of the fundamental depositional landforms that we would be talking about today. Now let's start with the very first landform and the most common landform that we usually see that is known as the flood plain. Now what is a flood plain? In the first diagram you can see you have a rock and the river flowing through the main bedrock. Now what happens is during the monsoon season or the rainy season, the incoming flow in this river increases. So when the incoming flow in the river increases, it kinds of crosses its own path and it crosses its own channel and it spreads out to the nearby areas. This process of deepening is known as lateral erosion and the water gradually spreads in the nearby areas or the vicinity of the river. When the river attains its normal flow, this water retreats back into the river, leaving behind this region as one of the most fertile regions. And this region which is left behind is known as the flood plain. So flood plains are those areas that are drained by the river or where the river used to flow during one peak time and now it is being left with a lot of sediments that have been brought by the river. These areas are known as flood plains. Now when these flood plains are formed, there are kind of silt deposits towards the edge of the river and these silt deposits are known as levees. So these levees are kind of high silt deposits which are found on the lower course of the river. Now let's see how the levees are formed. So the first diagram shows the water level, the flood stage level. In the second diagram you can see during the flood or the increase in the flow of river, the water goes up and tries to spread across the margins. So this uh, kind of fine deposits and sediments they deposit along the flood plains. So you have during the floods kind of deposition on both sides of the river embankment, and these deposit remain there while after the flood is gone the water retreats back. So the water level which was here is it recedes to the normal water level. But the deposits which were made here still remain and these are kind of structures which are formed on the either side of the river course and these structures are known as levees. Usually most of the time these levees are built by floods. The next important feature here could be the alluvial cone. Now alluvium is a kind of deposit that comes through the running river. As you can see in this diagram here, you have series of mountain ranges on both sides. So you have mountain ranges here and mountain ranges here. You have river that is coming through. This is a diagram which shows a kind of uh, dried out alluvial fan. Now the river that was coming through here tends to deposit in a kind of a structure which is fan shaped. Now there are two basic terms that we would try to understand here. Those are alluvial fans and alluvial cones. Now what's the difference between the two? Alluvial fans usually have much gentle slope. So as you can see the slope here 
becomes much more general so slope at the top is more steep so the river is coming this way so here the slope would be steep and towards the end here it's a kind of level land or a plain land so here the slope decreases now one of the fundamental difference between alluvial fan and alluvial cones is the fans are much more uh, fans are much more gentle slope as compared to the alluvial cones on the other hand alluvial cones usually have less water and they bring in more debris or more deposits i should say so these are the fundamental difference between alluvial cones and alluvial fans the structure differs so it's and an alluvial fans it is a kind of fan shaped structure as you can see here that is spreads out while an alluvial cones it's a kind of cone shaped structure which is much more uh, steeper so, so the slope is steeper and since the slope is steeper a lot of debris pushes in so you have more debris that are deposited under alluvial cones now let's talk about some more structures the next common structure is the delta so as you can see here this is a animation which shows the delta of mississippi river so let me first explain how delta formation takes place consider my hand to be a river so when the, this river is falling into the ocean it kind of separates out into various distributaries so consider each finger to be one distributary so when this river is coming up this kind of flows through the various streams and finally empties out into the ocean now when this river is flowing the region between the fingers these regions would be the region of sediment deposition so whenever a delta is formed it's a kind of structure which is similar to a thing uh, a hand so you have the rivers that are flowing through forming the distributaries and in between you will have the sediment flow that is deposited now usually wherever the deltas are formed it's a kind of region which has nearly no gravity zero speed of the river so the main activity here would be deposition now as you can see here this tributary is coming here and depositing and slowly and gradually this whole delta is progressing and now receding back so as you can see in the animation you have the river flowing in deposits getting up and this is the kind of delta that is expanding this expanding delta the process is known as progradation and when this retreats back or the retreat of delta that can be due to various reason, reasons like a sudden wave gush that is coming up or reduction in the sediment flow that is coming from the main river that leads to transgression and this transgression means retreat of the delta so these are the two common terms that we use one is progradation that means the delta is spreading or increasing its area into the ocean while transgression means the retreat of the delta there is another term which is known as aggradation this means the elevation is increasing so the delta is increasing in terms of it kind of elevates okay rather than moving forward or the position taking place at a faster pace, pace as in the case of progradation in aggradation what happens is the deposition kind of elevates so these are the three common phenomena that takes place under delta formation now there are some basic condition that needs to be fulfilled before a delta can be formed the first and the foremost condition here is the region where the delta is being formed should be a region of calm sea or calm ocean so it should be kind of silent waters with no active activities happening into the water now when the sediments are coming in so it has a large load that has to be emptied up 
into the ocean. So there are lots and lots of sediments and deposits that are coming into the ocean. Now there is an interesting phenomena that takes place in the regions of delta and that is known as flocculation. Now what is flocculation? The ocean water is saltier. Since there are salts in the ocean water, what happens is there is electric charge that is being produced and that electric charge kind of binds the sediments that are coming up and therefore the area or I should say the deposition of sediments increases due to the binding property of the electrical discharge and this process is what is known as the flocculation. Now there are various types of deltas that we try to understand today. Deltas can be formed by three basic activities. First is the activity of the waves in the ocean. Then you have tidal deltas formed due to the tidal activities and the activities of the river. Now under the tidal deltas, the most important that we will talk about today is the estuarine delta. Estuarine delta is a delta that is usually as we can see tide dominated formed in the regions where an estuary enters into the ocean. So it's a kind of direct uh, entry into the ocean. The common example is in the river fly. You have river C, which is a, again a common example of estuary delta, seen river in France. Now there are four other, three other major types of deltas that we would be talking about today. The elongate delta, which is known as the bird foot delta. So elongate delta establishes similar to the foot of a bird. You have very few major uh, distributaries that empties into the mouth as you can see here. The major distributaries are very few and there are other minor distributaries. A common example is Mississippi River. The next is Lobate Delta. Lobate Delta is also known as the fan shaped Delta. Again, you have major distributaries that are flowing into and the deposition occurs in the shape of a fan. So you have a kind of deposition that occurs in this fashion and it's known as the fan shaped deposition. Common example is Danube River. Finally, you have the Cuspid Delta. Cuspid delta is also known as the tooth shape. So as you can see here in the San Francisco river, you have this river that's flowing up and similar, ending up similar into a shape of a tooth. So it's also known as the tooth shape delta. You have uh, minor distributaries that are active. Under the fine shape uh, delta or we call it uh, we call it as lobe delta there is the important thing to note here is you have lots and lots of minor distributaries that travel around okay and each distributary kind of uh, plays a very important part in the formation of the delta so these were the basic features of the fluvial depositional landforms now again an important feature is a braided channel now when we talk about braided channel, some people, some geographers include braided channel as a part of fluvio arid deposits also because it's a common phenomenon usually in the semi-arid areas. It's a common characteristic of a semi-arid area. So what happens under braided channel is when there is a flood or a river is flooding out, so you have a lot of water that is gushing into. When the water is gushing into, you have large loads of sediment or huge pebbles that kind of deposit on the path and these heavy pebbles or heavy sediments make it difficult to roll out. So what happens is the river changes its path and tries to move across these sediments. These sediments kind of form depositions in between the river and these are known as islands or eons. A common characteristic in semi-arid region, what happens is during the heavy uh, rainfall or the flood season, you have a huge flow of water that goes or runs above this. But what happens when the water load decreases is, 
since the flow of the water decreases or the discharge of the water decreases, the speed automatically reduces and when the speed reduces, these heavy pebbles make it difficult for the water to pass through or they are unable to roll, I should say, they are unable to roll with the water. So they kind of deposit in between wherever they get the position. As a result, the water channel gets diverted and this diversion of water channel across the heavy sediments in the river is known as braided channel. Besides these, there are numerous features that are found in the fluvio-arid regions. Now when we talk about fluvio-arid regions, as you can see in the diagram here, you have the mountain ranges on the sides. So you have the sediments that are being deposited. These sediments here are known as pediment, pediment. So you have the pediment pass. So these are the regions across the slope of the mountains in the semi-arid or the arid areas. So we call it, we classify all these structures under fluvial arid depositional structures because they are made by two features that is one is the arid topography and another is the action of the running water. So what happens here is the mountain regions, the lower edges of the mountain forms the pediment and this region from where you can enter this is known as the pediment pass. The whole valley where you have a kind of shallow depression which was once the region where the river flowed is now known as Bajadas. So you have this valley floor which is known as Bajadas. This is the washout plain of the Bajadas. There are small sinks in between the Bajadas. And those sinks are kind of areas where the water used to be at a point of time or the accumulation of waters. Now this accumulation of water zones are known as salt plains or playas. Now these are a kind of endorheic lakes. Now what is an endorheic lake? An endorheic lake is a typical lake where there is no outflow of the water. So whatever lake is formed is there. There is no outflow from where the water can penetrate out or go out. So there is a kind of deposition that remains there for a huge period of time. So this region is a region of Payara, uh, Playa or we can call it as salt plains. Uh, salt plains and also they are known as Sins. And this whole feature which includes the bajadas and the sinks is known as the balls. So you have this region which is known as balsam which includes the sinks, the depressions where water is there, the prior region of a flood plain where the river used to flow and now it's a kind of deposition that is being left. So these are known as bajanas and the combination of these sinks and bajanas is known as falsen. The surrounding areas on the lower sides of the hills or the mountains is known as the pediments. With this we cover the major fluvial depositional features. In the next class we would be talking about the drainage types and the drainage patterns. You can subscribe to Examinist channel for further updates in geography and geomorphology. Till then have a good day ahead.